How do you answer to people who say the Council of Nicaea deciding what were the continents of the New Testament, I mean, what constitutes Christianity, really, uh, the Apostles' Creed and everything Christians stand for, how can you say that a group of people voting on what constitutes the contents of the New Testament, how can you base a religion off a group of people voting on what is a religion versus um, maybe Judas's account, like the book of Judas that was recently found, or uh, another person's account, like the account of Mary Magdalene? Okay, good. Let's, uh, let's deal with what, basically, if I'm understanding you right, what book should be in the Bible is basically what you're saying. Well, the count, what the Council of Nicaea included and why did they include those books rather than other books? Okay, well, the short answer, let me just give you a few uh, points here. First of all, the canon is a list of authoritative books more than it is an authoritative list of books. In other words, the only books that should be in the Bible are ones that God inspired. The question is, how did people discover which books were inspired? They did not determine which books were inspired. They discovered them, and they had certain criteria. For example, to discover the canon, was it written by a prophet of God? Somebody who was confirmed by acts of God or someone who is confirmed as an eyewitness. For example, Paul confirmed Luke. We mentioned before that somebody could do miracles. If somebody could do miracles, that person was seen as being authenticated by God. Luke didn't do miracles, but Paul confirmed him as writing accurate eyewitness accounts because Paul was confirmed by miracles. Was it accepted by the people of God? And virtually all the major books were. There were some arguments over certain books, as you know. Um, also, how did they confirm the authorship or authority of these books? Gospels and Acts are cited during the lives of the apostles. These were people who could do miracles, as I said. So the major books, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and Acts were all cited during the apostles. They are quoted as authoritative and unique. They are collected early in one volume by the people who, again, were authenticated. They were publicly read and expounded. Commentaries were written on these books. They were not written on other books, including Mary and, and Peter, Gospel of Peter, Gospel of Judas, but there's more to that in a minute. Opponents admitted the Gospels were written by the disciples. And finally, no other Gospels were treated this way. The Gospels, such as Peter, uh, the Gospel of Peter, the Gospel of Judas, the Gospel of Thomas. These were all second century works that were not written by eyewitnesses. And they're inaccurate, easy for me to say, anachoristic. Did I use that word right? Um, in other words, they have things in them that were either anti-Semitic or they have things in them that, that weren't right for the first century. And so we know they were written late. So they should not be included because they were not eyewitness accounts. In, in, in fact, the interesting thing about the Gospel of Thomas, the Gospel of Peter, the Gospel of Judas, is they have names of apostles on them, right? Why? Here's the way plagiary works today. You write something good, I steal it from plagiarism. You write something good, I steal it from you and I put my name on it and take all the credit for it, right? Here's how it worked with these documents. People would write something that they wanted the church to accept and they would steal an apostle's name and put it on it in the second century. Why? Because they knew that the people would only listen to an apostle, somebody who had been authenticated by signs and wonders. So somebody wrote Thomas it wasn't Thomas, he had been dead for almost 100 years, and they put his name on it and said, this is the Gospel of Thomas. Well, even some of the people in the second century recognized this and said, this is nonsense. Now, why wasn't there a Bible conference like the Council of Nicaea prior to 380, whatever it was? Because for the first 270 or so years of Christianity, the disciples and Christianity were on the run. It wasn't until Constantine made Christianity tolerable, he didn't make it the religion of the Roman Empire against what is mostly commonly thought, he just made it tolerable. It wasn't until then could they even convene in safety and decide which books God had inspired. Now let me point out one other thing. You don't need the canon to know that Christianity is true. You don't need the canon to know that Jesus rose from the dead. You just need historically reliable documents. 
And I think based upon what we said today, we have those. All right, okay? well, um, I, I enjoyed your commentary on that.